show. My name is Ryan Lee, the founder of Freedom.com, the number one resource for heart-centered lifestyle entrepreneurs. And right now you're listening to the world-famous Freedom Show. This is our daily show featuring the best 10 minutes of fluffy advice you're ever going to get on how to create your own true lifestyle business because it's not just about the money, it's about the freedom. And I just set up a very special free, 100% free online group where you could hang out with all the other crazy freedom freaks. Um, just head over to freedom.com slash breakfast, F-R-E-E-D-Y-M dot com forward slash breakfast, and I'll see you online. Now, we've got 10 minutes on the clock, and we've got none other than Zach Swinehart. Zach is the guy who created the freedom.com site. So, there really is not much more I can say beyond that. He's he's one of the few guys who really understands the tech, the coding, and the graphics, and putting it all together. Um, because there's a lot of graphics people and coders who don't really understand marketing. Zach understands it all. To learn more about Zach and his services, check out zachswinehart.com, and I will spell that for you: Z A C H S W I N E H A R T dot com. Zach, you ready to rock? I'm ready to rock, personally. <laughs> all right, well, then then that's all we need. Um, now, people listening, they're like, all right, I got it. I have my idea. I know what I want to do. I need to create my website, and then they're stuck. Then they just look, and they sometimes they do these cheap WordPress things, and they look awful. What do we need to know when we want to get a site created? Let, let's dive right in. So I think that the, the best thing for someone who's creating their first site, and it's something that a lot of people – skip is, uh, and you're obviously all about this, is simplification and, and not thinking so much about what's the best site I could make forever, but rather what's the, the best site I could make for where I'm at right now, that kind of whole minimum viable product sort of approach. Because a lot of the time people will come to me for their first website, they're just launching their podcast, and um, while I'm happy to do websites for anybody and every site I make will be perfect, a lot of the time if you're just getting started, the best thing you could do is create something that is simple and uh, like cheap, honestly, to be able to validate like what offer is working. For example, using lead pages is a great way to figure out what copy is going to convert. And then, once you know what offer people like and what copy people are liking, then paying for an expensive squeeze page versus kind of using an expensive squeeze page as your, your test case. Um, but anyway, so that, that's not what I wanted to get into, but the, the point I'm making is thinking in terms of simple, high level, like what are your objectives, is the best way to go, and then whatever you can implement the quickest. Um, and a good example is like for your site, the Freedom site. We were struggling with getting the membership stuff working, integrating with Samcart, all that stuff. And so you just took the, the simple approach, doing the Facebook group, and it works, and people love it. Right. So to me, the first step to creating a good website is knowing what your goals are from the site, like what you want the people on the site to do, and then coupling that with... Um, a knowledge of who's going to be coming to the site. So generally when people are starting their podcast, they have, hopefully, a lot of the time, some idea of a traffic source other than just organic iTunes traffic. And when that's the case, you can kind of start to understand the audience a little bit better, and hopefully we can dive in and you know segment, or not segment, but sorry, customize the message for that audience. So I'll stop rambling and let you ask further questions. <laughs> no, it's not rambling at all. Um, you said an important thing to know when starting is what are your objectives? You've worked with a lot of different businesses online and, and a lot of different objectives. Give us, you know, one, two or three common objectives that maybe even people aren't thinking about. They're just like, Oh, I want the site to look pretty, but they, there's one or two objectives they should be maybe focusing on. Well, I think the safest one when you're giving like some blanket generalization advice like this, because obviously it does depend on the person, right. but the safest one that really, you can't, you can't go wrong doing. It's building a list. Um, because if you start building a list now, and obviously you say this and you know this, but um, if you start building a list now, you don't have to have a product now. You don't have to, you don't have, to have anything to sell. You don't have to have your, your crap together yet. You just have to be able to provide good content and provide value with your free opt-in offer. And like you literally, you can't go wrong in building lists. Worst case scenario, you build a list and never mail to it. And then that's, there's no harm, no foul. But when the time comes that you want to promote something, if you have this hungry list that's ready to like, purchase something that you recommend because they love you and you've built a reputation of value and authority, then everything is so much easier versus 
building your site, launching your podcast, you have this this following, but they're not. There's no way that you can actually reach out to them. Then, if you start building your list later, once you decide you want to start selling stuff, you're kind of miles behind where you would be otherwise. So I'd say that that's one big objective that, in my opinion, everyone should have if they want to eventually be selling stuff. And furthermore, if they want to get people coming back, because there are plenty of times where I've had a really good experience on a website, like I read an article I liked or watched a video or something, but I didn't opt into their list, generally because they didn't push it, um, and I couldn't remember like the name of that site later when I wanted to go back. Uh, so by getting your list, you can increase your likelihood of getting repeat traffic and stuff. And obviously with iTunes, you can subscribe to the podcast, so that's not so much of an issue. But I'd say list building is probably the number one good goal. And then a number two goal that's obviously another generalization is to actually provide good, valuable content consistently so mm -hmm. that people can know when you're going to be releasing stuff and people can start to like you versus just giving them the minimum amount of content before you start smattering them with offers. Obviously, it's not very in an integrity, heart-driven sort of thing to do. Right. Um, uh, yeah. Okay, Go so we've, we've got opt-in, we've got good content. Now, in terms of, let me just flip it for a second, and obviously that's structurally. Now, in terms of the look, when I first started in the marketing world, you know, 15, 16 years ago, um, there's a, there's a, a trend, there was a trend that's just, look, you don't want it to look too good. You don't want your site to look too nice because then it almost has this different perceived value. It feels kind of too glossy and you can't charge a lot. You've got to make it look homemade and ugly. Um, but it seems like it's going the other way now where people want that professional look or they're aiming for it. Uh, what are your thoughts? I think that more important, like when, when we're talking about strictly about the look, um, the thing that I've noticed a lot is like, you know, those old optimized press one style sales pages, like yeah. just very, you know, uh, I think I, I had uh, something I observed a few years ago when I was doing my own info marketing stuff where because I wasn't in the information marketing, internet marketing niche, people would see those sorts of like kind of hypey sales pages and they'd just think they were like literally scam pages. Like people who weren't in this market would see it and they're like, oh, I thought those were always just scams. So I think that having a good, clean design speaks volumes for professionalism and like reliability. Um, and I think builds a lot of trust when it comes to purchasing because I, I even notice it with myself. When I'm on a site where the design's kind of crappy, I often will be like kind of hesitating on whether or not to buy the thing from them because I don't know how it's going to go. Like I don't know if they're even going to deliver the product. Right. Um, but you know, at the same time, there are plenty of blogs where it's clear that the person did it themselves, and it's not very good. It's not like a very good design, um, but it's not like a hypey kind of like, you know, again, old school internet marketing sales page sort of design. So. I think that, you know, from just feedback I've gotten from clients and from my own stuff, investing the money into a professional design certainly helps. But I don't want to, I mean, obviously this, again, I'm happy to do designs for everyone because I like getting money to do designs for people. But, <laughs> um, you know, being honest, I think it's, it's more important that the design is just good enough and, and that it's easy to navigate. Because that's, that's what matters the most is that it's clear to get where you want to get and it's clear to get the content you want. If you have really killer content, it forgives a lot, I think. Um, but having, having a design that looks nice and is easy to get around is, is going to be the most important thing. Um, and then once that's working a bit, then investing in a really nice design, I think, is the way to do it. Are there any resources? You had mentioned lead pages. Any other tools or resources you recommend? How about just finding a WordPress you know, template off the shelf and kind of modifying it yourself? Um, I mean, that's an okay way to go. And is this for podcast specifically or just uh, No, I'm just saying general? just in general, if someone wants to build a site for themselves, let's say they want to either be a coach or eventually sell products or sell t-shirts, whatever it's going to be, but they're going to, they want to build a brand, um, where, and, and they, they're not ready yet. Like they don't have enough to invest with Zach Swinehart. Mm -hmm. Um, so they just want to do it themselves on a budget, you know, give me one or two resources where you'd recommend some beginners go. Theme Forest is a good place for, for finding themes in general. Theme Forest. If it, mm -hmm. Themeforest.net. Yeah, I like that place. Um, for podcasts, I know that John and Kate recently launched their podcast sites service. Mm -hmm. um, and then there's like, I think Appendipity does, but the, actually, sorry, let me erase that because that's not very good. I don't like Appendipity that much. So never mind about Appendipity. Um, <laughs> yeah, that's what's hard is that because I'm so immersed in this this world of doing stuff for people, I'm obviously not looking out so much for do-it-yourself sorts of things a lot. 
But um, I'd say looking around on Theme Forest for a good theme that without much customization is going to work as a starting point. Okay. And then using lead pages for testing like squeeze pages and stuff, I think right. is a fine way to start. All right. Awesome. Zach, and our 10 minutes is up. How do you like that? That's how we rock here. Let me mention your site one more time. Zach Swinehart, Z-A-C-H-S-W-I-N-E-H-A-R-T dot com. Thank you, Zach. And if you guys are interested in having a pro create your site, definitely, I definitely recommend Zach. So this is Ryan Lee. We are signing off. Don't forget, go to our free group, freedom.com slash breakfast. And we're going to have breakfast together every morning. This is Ryan Lee signing off. Have no fear. We'll be back tomorrow. We're here seven days a week, 24 hours a day at the Freedom Show. Have an amazing day. See you tomorrow. Take care and bye-bye.